Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the GE dishwasher flood switch. It's going to be a very easy repair and should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new flood switch. The flood switch tells the dishwasher whether it's empty or full of water. The manager should be changing it out, so if it's failed, and the dishwasher is either overfilling or not filling at all. In order to change the part, we have to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet. First thing we're going to do is go underneath the sink and disconnect the lines. Now that we're underneath the cabinets, you want to make sure that the dishwasher is still unplugged, and you may want to throw a towel down. When we take off the fill line and the drain hose, there's going to be some water that comes out. First, we're going to disconnect the fill line. It's connected right here to the hot water valve. You want to make sure the water valve is off. And then we're going to use our 5 8 inch wrench to loosen up the hose. Once you have it broke free, you can just reach in and unscrew it by hand. Once you have it off, you can just set it down. And then we can take off the drain hose. To take the drain hose off, you just want to follow it up to wherever it goes. It may go to the garbage disposal. Ours goes up to the air gap. Once you locate the end of it, we're going to take a 5 16 nut driver and loosen up the clamp. Once you have the clamp loose, you can pull it free and set it down. Now that we have the lines disconnected, we're going to open up the dishwasher door and pull the lower rack out. All you have to do is reach in and grab it, pull it out, just lift it off and set it aside. Now we can use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Once you have the screws out, we're going to lift up on the door and carefully use it to start to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet. Once you have it out far enough, you can just grab the frame and pull it out the rest of the way. Now we're going to put the dishwasher on its side. We're going to lay a towel down so we don't damage anything. Once you have the towel down, you can just carefully lay the dishwasher on its side. Now that we have the dishwasher on its side, first thing we're going to do is remove the drip pan. All you have to do is slide it forward, pull it off. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the cover off, we have access to the flood switch. It's mounted right here in this housing that's mounted on the sump of the dishwasher in the middle. We're going to use a quarter inch nut driver to take out the screw. We're going to grab it and turn it over. You can use a small flathead screwdriver to help take the wires off. We had the orange one on the bottom and the red with the white stripe on the top. And then there's two locking tabs on each side. So we're going to take two small flathead screwdrivers and we'll lift one up on one side. And then get the one on the other side. And then push the switch up. We can do the other one. Once you have it free, you can pull it off the dishwasher. Here's the old flood switch next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. To put the new flood switch in, we're just going to push it into place, making sure it locks in. Once you have it in place, you can put the wires on. Remember the orange one was on the bottom. The red and the white was on the top. Once you have them in place, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put the screw back in. Once 
once you have it installed, we can put the drip pan back on. To put the drip pan on, you want to make sure that the front is this way with the lip and these two little indentations. And then there's four locking tabs, two on the top, two on the bottom. And what you have to do is press the drip pan in and then slide it back to lock them all in. So we're just going to line it up, press it up so they go past the little locking tabs and then slide it back. Now we can lift the dishwasher back up. All you have to do is carefully lift it up, set it on its feet, and then pull the towel out. Now we have to reach underneath and put the line through the cabinets. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway. Then we can go underneath the sink and pull on the lines to make sure they're not caught on anything. Then we can push the dishwasher in the rest of the way. Now we can reconnect the drain hose to the air gap. Once you have it pushed up into place, we're going to use our 5 16 inch nut driver to tighten down the clamp. Once you have the drain line hooked up, we can hook up the water line. All you have to do is get it started by hand. Once you have it snug, we can reach in with our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down so it doesn't leak. Now that we have the lines reconnected, we can open up the dishwasher door and use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws to hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Now we can put the lower dish rack back in. All you have to do is set it on the door and push it back into place. Once you have it in, you can close the door. Then we can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.